All right, we're live. So welcome to our Facebook uh, live event, Red Feather Mind, Body, Spirit. I'm Christopher McLaurin. Today, we have a very special guest, writer, speaker, and thought leader, Von Brashler, who is the author of most recently of Manifesting, Secret Steps to Visualize Real Change. We want to catch up today to learn more about this amazing book and what's ahead, but first, a little bit on Von. Uh, Von Brashler is the author of many books on uh, consciousness, development, dreams, energy healing, and time, amongst other, a myriad of other things. Um, he's lectured um, and led workshops throughout the, the U.S. and the U.K. He's also appeared on many radio and television programs and was a finalist for the Cover Visionary National Book Award. That's a prestigious award. Uh, previously, he was a host of a popular uh, podcast called Healing with Your Pet, Our Psychic Spiritual Connection. Uh, previous books include Seven Secrets of Time Travel, uh, Moving the Light, and Confessions of a Reluctant Ghost Hunter, among how many books do you have, like 16 or 17? It's, yeah. it's something like that. Something like that, yeah, yeah. But this is, yeah, this is different. Uh, he, lives, <laughs> <laughs> he lives in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, but does most of his writing in a cabin in the remote island of Washington State. So, uh, so wonderful to have you here, uh, Vaughn. And we've had some great discussions. We had one right before the program here. Um, you're a font of wisdom and, and knowledge, and we want to impart that to the audience um, as well so they can understand what a fantastic resource uh, you are. Um, and so, but I wanted to kind of, you know, get some more background on you. And uh, yeah, so, so tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, hi, Chris, and, and thank you for having me um, in this way. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a delight to be part of your uh, Red Feather um, family and to be part of Schiffer Publishing. Um, yeah. Some of my favorite friends and authors are our Red Feather author, uh, authors. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I told you this. And they mm -hmm. said, why aren't you with, with Red Feather? Yeah. And I said, I don't know. <laughs> so I sent you something and gosh, you said, here's a contract, Vaughn. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You people are fun to work with. You know, you are fun to work with. My background actually is in uh, newspaper journalism and I worked a bit in, in radio um, and um, mo mostly in, you know, news reporting. And my background educationally is primarily in communication studies. Hmm. And, uh, and that's kind of like taken me interesting ways, mm -hmm. you know, thinking of communication theory. Um, so then at some point I decided that people weren't going to read newspapers much anymore. Mm -hmm. And I got into magazines and then I realized people weren't going to read magazines much more. <laughs> and I, I started working for book publishers and I worked for a few book publishers Mm -hmm. Not as prestigious as, as yours, and, and and well, golly, one day uh, um, I decided I'm just going to stay home and write. I mean, I don't know what happens, but I've seen so many books out there, and it, it, I think there's some some little holes that need to be explored, and I'm going to try it. So that I went home and and I wrote a book immediately, <laughs> and I gave it to my last publisher, and he said, "Gosh, where do you get this idea?" which mm -hmm. led me, the question led me to a second book. And then mm -hmm. it kept on and on and on. So mm -hmm. it's been a wonderful adventure and, a, and, and thank you for having me. Yeah, uh, it's our pleasure. Um, and uh, this is a, just manifesting as a fantastic book here on, on just that. Um, really uh, different. There are other manifesting books out there, but this is uh, you know, just a different approach, a unique approach. Um, and I think an effective approach. I tried using it myself to uh, some, some results actually, I'll be honest. Uh, so it's, tell, tell us how, how this kind of changes the game for, for those who are wanting to learn. It is different. And, and uh, I try not to read, I try not to read contemporary people who write on the mm -hmm. same subject as I do. Although mm -hmm. from time to time I have to, and I, and I like to, mm -hmm. but, but I try not to be influenced by current thinking. I try to look at ancient wisdom. I mm -hmm. look at esoteric writing. I look at classical literature. And, 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 and that's kind of the basis of what I come from. No age, I'm not a new ager. I'm an old ager. I mean, I'm into you know, ancient esoteric studies. You know, I read like things like the Yoga Sutras, and, you know, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 yeah, this book is different. So this book is based on, on um, the idea of thought forms and mm -hmm. thoughts actually being having a form of, of a sense, not in, in a material uh, sense, but mm -hmm. in the sense that they do manifest themselves upon the physical world and that thoughts can be directed and have uh, targeted impact. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, we can, that after all, our thoughts come, our deepest thoughts, our most powerful thoughts come not from our physical mind, but actually from an, another, another place, a place of spirit, a uh, place of our inner self, 
um, it would be our consciousness, which would connect us to then universal consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think that What's different is that I, I look at consciousness and I look at thought forms and thought power and directing our thought power with focused intent. And I look at doing this with using creative visualization, which is mm -hmm. somewhat traditional. But then I also, it, it seemed to me in studying some yoga that mm -hmm. a lot of cre uh, creative visualization that's being practiced today is has holes in it. They're, they're just, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be disappointed when you try to manifest something if you use creative visualization as many people have been shown to do because it will be little more than wishful thinking right exactly yeah you you, you uh and that that's how i think how people get kind of uh, tripped up uh with manifesting things they just say it's just wishful thinking they don't there isn't a real um formula there's not a, a, a system or process um, throughout this book, you have some really fantastic exercises for a whole myriad of different um, uh, things to uh, to manifest or to even uh, do to to kind of like just to enhance your own kind of spiritual life, uh, really. So it's really amazing. So you make it in this like three basically improvements. The one is to the drawing and the painting of the personal picture. I mean, um, I think that's really vital um, and something mm -hmm. that that um, and, you know, you'll get that in other manifesting mm -hmm. um books and I, I don't mean to reference keep on referencing those but um there's that's kind of a basis um but you know drawing the picture um and uh which is which is you know pretty very important um and then then the other thing is the tucking in the back of your consciousness i i that's something that i kind of was hard to wrap my head around the tucking of the uh image into your consciousness could you explain that a little bit i'm um, like well, what it really is you know when i was first studying um meditation, Chris, I, mm -hmm. I, I looked at hypnosis. Mm -hmm. I looked at self-hypnosis and I realized mm -hmm. that you could give yourself a post-hypnotic suggestion. Okay. So the idea of tucking it back into the back of your mind is, is, it has two points. One is it prepares you, gives you a chance to prepare yourself for leaving the body. And it also sets up the post-hypnotic suggestion with that when you bring back the thought, to let's say a, a clear blank slate in front of your mind's eye, mm -hmm. you bring it back into focus that this drawing, never words, never sounds, but a drawing mm -hmm. would actually then uh, then trigger you to go exactly where you've where you've what you've drawn on this clean blank slate. It's like a, an unerring map that'll take you directly to your target. With right. your thoughts, with your right. thoughts. Yeah. And then I think, you know, the, the real, um, all these keys are important, but then that we're like, kind of caps it off is this desire is the, is the bringing it forth and, and, you know, using the light to bring it forth and to, to really you know, have that desire and, and, and to, to be able to, to manifest what you're, what you're after. So I think that's those are coming some of the ways and, uh, the creative application you know, of the process is, is vital. And again, you have so many, you know, very clear exercises on, you know, how to do these things, you know, how to, and, and also not even just manifesting, but also healing, going into a lot into the healing as well of yourself, um, of others, uh, of your pets, of your plants, um, <laughs> of a variety yeah, yeah. of things. It, it's really interesting, you know, so, so it's, so it's more, it's a kind of a, uh, you know, a spiritual primer almost. It's almost like I, I kind of almost equate it to a grimoire almost. You know, but not in that 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 deepest sense, perhaps, or that that. Um, it is. It is a grimoire. I'll be, I'll be honest right. with you. It, it is. It is. It right. is. It is a how-to um, magical book. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a magical book that anybody can do from exactly. any tradition. Right. Right. So that's what takes it out of that you know very specific uh, specific realm. And right. Makes it be more. Um, applicable for uh, you know just about just about anybody too. Um, so uh, one thing that really kind of like peppered throughout this book is about um, theosophy. And for those of you who don't know about theosophy, uh, could you maybe give us a little bit of background on what that is and how it kind of plays into this book? Well, yeah, I mean, I had no idea of theosophy. I was working at a newspaper in Oregon, and one day I came out looking for my newspaper in in place of the newspaper this morning on the ground where it normally sits was. A book but the cover was ripped off and it was a book by Jeffrey Hodson who mm -hmm. was a, a minister from New Zealand who was a theosophist an excellent esoteric writer mm 
-hmm. And he talked about magical correspondences. And I looked at his magical correspondences and I said, Eureka, I have found it. But but I, I couldn't figure out where these people were. And I ended up going to an island out in the San Juans near where I'm sitting right now, actually. Oh. And and I and I found these people and they kind of like hide. Well, it's an esoteric group, you know, and it was started by a Russian psychic author named Helen Blavatsky, Helena Blavatsky. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. in 1875, actually in New York, with a Colonel Henry Olcott, who was a, uh, an American uh, uh, soldier and actually a postmaster general. And um, they together formed this group. And then they moved it all, you know, became international. They moved to southern India for their worldwide headquarters. And um, they, uh, she wrote extensively on consciousness. In fact, the, her her whole book, uh, The Secret Doctrine, looks at the origins of life and how we interrelate in the, the grand life drama um, as as a study in consciousness, universal in human consciousness. Like consciousness actually propels and sustains all of life, and consciousness is throughout life, and all of life contains consciousness. And then, then she had many people who kind of followed her and wrote on a similar vein as the Osmos. One was Annie Bessett, who was actually a, uh, a reformer from, from England. She mm -hmm. led the uh, Match Girl strike. She's quite a gal. Mm -hmm. She was a, a suffragette. She was for children uh, against children's mm -hmm. labor. Mm -hmm. uh, she was one of the first union organizers. She was instrumental in India's independence and, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, also in India's um, 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 modern India with, you know, uh, women having voting rights and so okay. forth. So, so an education in India, she was, okay. So, and then she, yeah. she wrote a book called Thought uh, Power, mm -hmm. Thought Power. And then together she wrote a book with another man, Charles Ledbetter, who was another theosophist. Mm -hmm. He's most famous for this book, uh, The Chakras. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, together, uh, Ledbetter and uh, Bessett wrote a book called Thought Forms. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what I've gleaned from Theosophically for my book actually was taken from their books, Thought Forms and Thought Power. Mm -hmm. and I've also taken material from uh, Alice Bailey mm -hmm. and, um, and Hodson. And, and I think that there's a whole lot that's been written, actually, about thought forms and thought power, mm -hmm. thought action deed. You, if you see it, you can be it, you know. But okay. I, think, I think a lot of people still think of thoughts as just something that's just an empty um, uh, bit of imagination inside your head. And it has no direction. It mm -hmm. has no focus. It has no impact. And they show in their books, these, these theosophists, how you can actually focus and, and with, with proper intent, um, direct your thoughts with impact. But you can best do this with creative visualization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you referenced uh, so many um, different inspirations uh, for this. You know, you had you know, Ledbeater and uh, Blavatsky and, uh, you know, Pantajali. Even yeah. you, you, you referenced Pantajali, Jung. Yeah. Einstein, yep. you mentioned, um, yep. you know, it all kind of comes together. Um, and even uh, Napoleon Hill, I'm a fan of, I, I got my book on a lot of business books and things. And I always call that kind of business metaphysics is what I call yes, it. Yes, yes. You know, it's like, you know, think it and, and, you know, you have to, you know, believe it before you see it. Um, yes. Or, you know, it's a, and, and vice versa too, you know, it's all kind of like, you know, you know cyclical that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, and I, I guess that he would have been influenced by, you know, those, um, that period during that period too, similar period, I suppose too. So mm -hmm. it all comes together, and so this is a great synthesis of uh, you know many uh, you know different uh, different um, aspects there mm -hmm. together for anyone to really kind of digest um, and uh, and utilize as well. So it's not just yeah, theoretical; it's actually like practical use. Um, yes. I love when you have the the idea of you know they just just you know and they're very simple too. It's not like you have to get in like complex yoga poses or things like yeah. that to kind of out you know unlock. You know different um, areas, yeah. that align your chakras, those kind of things. It's it's dealing with 
you know, sit, simple, simple sitting, you know, loose clothing, that's kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know, very basic. And then just that the, uh, that you just utilizing the, the, the process of the thought forms. And then I really like to go into um, the use of light too. Now I didn't, we talked about it before, but yeah. use of light, um, and the different uses of light. I um, have a great little chart, a very easy to use chart in here on, you know, the different kinds of, um, you know, the, the color and uh, what the energy is, you know, so as you're, as you're utilizing that too, so yes. um, I could touch maybe on that that aspect too. How the light is is uh, that is so important? What how it all connects together? Yes. Well, well, con consciousness is light. Um, light is consciousness. Spirit is is light. Mm -hmm. uh, it is um, it is a different uh, aspect of of consciousness, or or I would call it intelligent energy, mm -hmm. um, and so this is this this is this is purely magical but the magical aspects of color let's go with that mm -hmm. so you can look at the seven chakras if you will yes. going back to mr ledbetter and those who followed him and writing on chakras mm -hmm. so you look at the energy centers of the body they're really not in the physical body solely you know, you can't really line them up, you know, like up and down the spine as people like to do. That's very linear thinking. The chakras exist on every level of our being. By that, I mean outside of us in our subtle energy bodies, mm -hmm. the bodies that surround us like a luminous egg. Mm -hmm. And and uh, th this is, um, you know, you look at like, uh, let's start with the base chakra, or you red, so red would be uh, has a certain vibrational level as as light so you can also measure red as a certain note on the diatonic scale and then it goes on with yellow yeah. and orange and all the way through the chakras so green you know blue uh, you know um, indigo and and violet you know the whole spectrum the 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 color spectrum of the of the of the um, uh, the rainbow, if you mm -hmm. will. Mm -hmm. So this is what this is actually what we see. This is what we see. it's not. It's not. It's certainly not all the colors, but these are seven colors that are like dominant in our world. They're dominant in our lives. And every color has a vibrational quality. Well, it's really the vibration of consciousness, of our thought forms, of intelligent energy, of light, of of color that actually is what's important it's the vibration which is to say it's the energy it's the it's the little jingling that changes something the little vibration so mm -hmm. what we're talking about is really as intelligent energy as consciousness consciousness and light truly are it, it is really the vibrational quality that gives us the the uh, potency to affect real change Right, right, exactly, and yep. it, it illustrated how you know how that's utilized quite well, you know, in the book, and and at how different kinds of, of light um, are utilized and what they mean, um, and uh, yeah, it's I, I you mentioned just just really briefly about uh, the diatonic scale scale, uh, and uh, you know how you said I think red is the, the middle C of the yeah uh, you know, middle C middle C middle C middle C yeah so yeah. Uh, that I, I kind of went off on a tangent oh I got to research that more you know um, that's a whole other you know book. <laughs> Maybe so, so if you think of like we're talking about desire if you want to really draw desire in you're going to focus on probably uh the spleen chakra you know in the abdominal area sometimes called the sacral chakra mm -hmm. so so th then you're going to be looking at like yellow and you're going to be looking also at the at the letter at, at the uh, the musical note e mm -hmm. so but to to draw upon this upon this you you don't you don't verbalize yellow or think of this swirling vortex of energy or you don't actually sound the the note e you think it mm -hmm. Hmm. and okay. all you have to do is think it and that i got from scott cunningham bless his soul okay all right um, I need to work on that. Uh, so, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the best the best magic happens inside your head. Definitely, definitely. Well, that's great. Uh, you know, that's a good point, point. Um, and it does. And throughout this, you know, it's a very um, I, I found it very uplifting. It's an uplifting, you know, positive book. You know, um, 
the, you know, the world kind of like the world is ours to co-create really. Yes. We, we have the power to, um, you know, affect real change, just as the, as the you know, subtitle says, to, to affect real change. Um, not only in ourselves, but we start, it starts with ourselves, but also the world itself, because as we transform ourselves, we transform the world, you know, so, um, which I think is incredibly vital. It's always vital, but especially now it's a vital, um, you know, message uh, to have. And again, I, I always go back to the usefulness of this. Um, you know, you say, you say here that the, it's really the journey is everything. If, if we're focused on, you know, the best being, you know, having the best journey possible and being an active part of that journey. Um, as well there's a I, there's a part in here that made me a chuckle actually what was it um uh, wouldn't you rather be a co-creator than a sack of human <laughs> something uh, you know <laughs> a sack of human waste you know it, it, i had to pause like yes yes i do i want to be a co-creator rather than just a sack of you know a sack of water or whatever you know so um, not 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 actually creating um and moving forward and helping others to move forward too but the same thing is and, and you come back to this too um a lot is um uh, in, in trying to help others too, um, the ethical portions of that as well, they have to be, you know, uh, willing or want to, you know, to, which I think is, is vital. Um, and, you know, bringing in the, the karmic aspects of, of things as well. So there's so much that you kind of like weave in, you know, to, uh, to this book, um, you know, that's very, very powerful. And, and it's, it's a good starting point for anyone's like, Oh, I want to read more about, you know, Blavatsky or I want to be, I, I want to read the, the uh, the sutras of Pantajali, or maybe I want to go, you know, in other directions. Mm -hmm. You know, like you mentioned, uh, theosophy in, in India, and you know, the indep Indian independence. Now I want to read uh, Sri Aurobindo. Yes. You know, oh, because you know, there's, there's a connection there. Definitely. So, you know that. You know, so I think there's 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 so much you can you can start with here. You know, and it, it's a good. You know, it, it's it's just it's not too much. Um, you know, but it's it's enough. You know, so it's not just like a pamphlet. It's 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 meaty too. So you have a lot of good stuff in here for sure. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it's really, uh, I, I think it does really change the game as far as manifesting it and other things are concerned too. So it's really for anyone who is like on that journey and wants to understand how they can affect their journey more, more or better. I think that's really, that's really who it's for. So, um, so with all that, you know, you've written so many books. So how this, how did this book come into being specifically? It was just that easy. Just send us, you know, sent the proposal in and boom, that, that was it. I forget. <laughs> I, I wrote it rather <laughs> quickly. I, and I, I, and I, was sit, I was sitting yeah. on the island, Chris, and I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. W w Marla Brooks said I should send it to who? <laughs> and I said, oh, I got to look it up. <laughs> so, and so I sent it off electronically. Mm -hmm. And then I got home and then there was, there was this envelope and I said, oh my gosh. I said, they returned it. I said, no, no, you submitted it electronically, Vaughn. And I said, oh, it's just throw it away. He said, open it, Vaughn. And it was a contract. And it said, sign it and send it back in two weeks. And I said, <laughs> what? See, so in, in, it, 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 this is also a way to manifest. You know, we manifest where we want to Im impact on the world. And I wanted it to be with you people. So uh, what I what I realized was I'd always had these thoughts about thought forms and projecting thought forms mm -hmm. and in practical applications. And it really irked me, I will say, that there were a lot of books out there. Mm -hmm. not, 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 not the wonderful book that you've published on manifesting uh, or before mine, because um, you, you publish quality things, but there are a lot, there's a lot of schlock on the market. And it's like, you know, it's like wishful thinking books it's like Christmas list books and people want things that really aren't good for them. So like, I try to say like, if yeah. you actually, if you act actually have to align yourself with something that other people can support with their mm -hmm. thoughts. So you could like, Oh, you could like um, go in, 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 in a crowd and you could like sing a song together and it, it would have great power. But if it's not actually creating something, but destroying something, it's not going to happen. So I tried to think of like really practical applications, mm -hmm. and and it like manifesting uh, a, a, a picture of lost um, people or lost pets, or mm -hmm. bringing people into your life, or bringing events in your life, mm -hmm. you know. And if it's if it's right, if it's in if it's alignment in alignment as we see in yoga, the union of all, the unity of all, if right. it's in harmony with the universe, then other people would support it, but not bring it down. So you would have support for that 
that, if you will, that thought form manifesting itself. So I, I started to think about like practical things, like when people lose their car keys yeah. or lose, lose their cats or, 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 or someone who they want in their life and they, in their, and they're lost at sea or they have yet to become part of your life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and opportunities that we would like to open up to ourselves. All of this we can creatively visualize and manifest mm -hmm. if we follow certain steps. And then I thought, well, some of the steps that people are, are leaving out, it, it's like, oh, it's like um, you go to the diving board, but you forget to actually dive off the board. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh. It's like we have to go and, like, connect the dots. And it was really pretty easy to do it. Mm -hmm. And I hope people find it useful. I mean, I use it myself all the time. It's almost second nature. Oh, yeah. You, you can tell that, too, you know, that just the way it's written. Um, it just comes from a place of, you know, of deep knowledge. One of my favorite parts is actually, I, I circled it here. You can't see that. But um, why not every manifestation becomes realized? Why not? You know, yeah. why, why does it not happen? Yeah. And um, I have a double underline. Is your, your, your desires need to conform to the greater good of, on a spiritual level. Yeah. above the grand design and on the physical level below the grand design i think that is so key because people like will get frustrated by like well why you know i want this you you, you reference like why don't psychics win the lottery all the time yes you know right <laughs> 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 why is it it's a perfect or like you know go to the track and they're always winning why because it wouldn't conform you know with the grand design right so yes. it's just not yeah of course the, i mean it could probably i mean but you know but um but it's it's not right it's not it doesn't it doesn't feed the uh progression of uh you know consciousness and 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 the growth of um you know of the grand design so that's that's where i think if, it, if nothing else i mean that that paragraph right there is like oh yeah of course <laughs> it, uh, and things really need to be in alignment you know in terms of yoga we call it unity or union they really need to be vertically and and also horizontally on this earth aligned with others. And, and, and if it's not, you know, we talk about being a co-creator in the universe. Well, yes. I mean, we're, we're born, we're born with a, a, a mix to make jello, but most of us never actually add the water and stir, you know, and it's right. like, Oh, how could I make jello? I I'm not a jello maker. Come mm -hmm. on. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It makes it so dry just to complete your, you know, your, yeah. Your <laughs> <laughs> and then it jiggles around. Is it really yeah. something or is it, what is it, you know? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Plus what, 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 what flavor we go, we get that, the whole tangent we go on yeah. just the jello, the jello. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like to think about jello because it is Blavatsky wrote about, uh, uh, what called, um, the, uh, not Akasha, but she wrote about Swabhavat. Swabhavat. And it's, it's an ancient, ancient uh, um, Sanskrit term, which she spells wrong in her book, but I won't go there because <laughs> she's Russian. It's like, give her a break. So, so she talks about the plastic quality of how things are manifest on the earth. And it's like, we're giving, we're given a whole lot of uh, flexibility here to make this a better world and to make this all connect. Mm -hmm. And part of it is like, is establishing a harmonic union, you know, and, yeah. and making things connect. We're not meant to be living like fragmented lives. Right, exactly. <clears throat> and uh, you also make a point about the, the future, you know, how the future, you know, is not fixed, you know, there, but there's there are certain, there, you know, it, it, there's so much, just there's so much packed in such a small in this in this package here. <laughs> really, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I get a bit, I get a bit esoteric at times, but yes, it's true. You know, yeah. and it and it's like anything that is in this book, you can also add the phrase at the end, uh, beyond time and space. Beyond yeah, time and space. because because you know we are not limited by time and space. I mean, everybody thinks we're limited by time and space. Mm -hmm. That is a, a a an illusion of living in a in a manifest world of three dimensions, three dimensions and five physical senses that drive everything we see and and, and believe. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah, that's that's it. incredibly. Yeah, there are a lot of powerful things within this uh, book. So, 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 I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Go ahead. So finding like lost keys. Let's yeah, go back to finding lost keys. Yeah, what what are we gonna do here? Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. Are keys? what do you do? Well, right. you know, it's it's like you there, you gotta have a choice. You can either go back. Well, you have a choice. You can look at where they are now, and if that doesn't work, I always say, look at where they were. What you're now, you're time traveling. 
-hmm. And then you can also look where they're going to be. That's where you're going to intersect with them in the future. So sometimes, you know, you can actually, they always, as people always say, picture in your mind where they are. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you know, if you, that doesn't work, you picture in the mind where, where they were when you lost them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could say, well, this is part of your physical memory, but no, no, no. It, 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 it actually, it, it's not in your memory or you'd remember, right? So right. then you say, well, then I'm going to picture where they are when we intersect in the future. Now you're time traveling beyond time and space. It's very practical. Definitely, yes, and, and incredibly useful as well. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that too, and then that reminds me of you have a section on uh, remote viewing. Um, you know about that, how that kind of that 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 process a little bit, and and um, you know just uh, going you know into the the methods uh, for you know starting to understand how that might work. Um, so I think you know so that's again something that personally basically anyone could pick up and, and use in a large variety of ways and go back to as well. So, you know, if they have, you know, if they don't have a pet now, they might have a pet in the future. And if they want to be able to heal it, you know, so it, it'll be something that will stay on my shelf for a long time, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, and so I guess really with this book, you know, if, if you want anyone to like remember like one major thing about it, what, what do you think it would be? That you actually um, can picture the 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 your heart's desire you can actually you can actually direct your thoughts mm -hmm. uh with impact mm -hmm. and and change things but you ha you have to think that most of us have thoughts in there and we're, we're projecting them all the time and why aren't they as successful and it's mm -hmm. for a very simple reason they don't they don't have any faith in their thoughts having impact or direction. They're just like bouncing their thoughts off the wall. And we've all walked into rooms that are just crazy with like, like thoughts that are bouncing off the wall and off of people and, and striking innocent victims with their negativity or their anger or their emotional impact. Mm -hmm. And it's like, these are undirect, undirected uh, thought forms. So what I try to do is I try to I get people to direct their thoughts mm -hmm. with focused intent and impact and mm -hmm. to do that through a careful progression of steps that take you through creative visualization. And there's literally nothing you can you you cannot do if you follow this this plan. I, I fully believe that. Like, that's, that's why this, it's, it's an inspirational. Uh, book because you really you know even if you just use one of these exercises um you know or or, or not just just to just to read about the potential uh of what you can do um just for yourself as as a co-creator um yeah i i you know i think anyone can gain you know a, a change of attitude even at the very least you know through this a profound change you know with this uh you know with this book so you know i now i i I think you're an inspirational uh, person here, but I'm sure people who who have inspired you, who, who's inspired you the most, do you think, along your journey? Is it Ooh, along? wow. Ooh, I know, right, yeah. So <laughs> many people. Right. Uh, okay, I think the most impact on my life probably was a rather obscure man who lived on Orcas Island in the San Juans. Okay. He's, he was an, a, uh, an author and a psychic, and his name was Lewis Gittner. Okay. And he wrote various books, one was called Listen, Listen, Listen. Hmm. Well, another was called Love is a Verb. Uh -huh. And uh, another one was called uh, There is a Rainbow. And uh, these are rather obscure, obscure books. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he, he, he worked with people who would find him. He was the real thing. He was a teacher who just was waiting for students to find him. Mm -hmm. Never charged any money, never had any classes or curriculum, mm -hmm. uh, never had any outreach. He mm -hmm. lived an obscure life on an island running an inn. And it was not an accident that he ran an inn because he wanted to interface with people who would mm -hmm. find them along their life journey. Mm -hmm. um, and and if, if, if you would, if you would recognize who he was, uh, he would spend endless amounts of time with you. And he gave me a lot of the magical formula that kind of made sense of everything I'd learned in theosophy. Although he wasn't a theosophist. I mean, it's like 
first uh, conceive, uh, then uh, achieve, and then believe. And if you leave any of the steps out, it's like, uh-oh, it's like the ladder falls down. So a lot of people can conceive, but they don't achieve, and then ultimately they don't believe. So part of what I took away from him was that if you're going to manifest something and visualize something effectively, you can try to project a thought with impact and try to target it, but, 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 but you have to actually believe that it could happen. Otherwise, you send it out with not enough impact. Right, right, exactly. And it's, it's interesting, you know, it's, I, that the love is a verb, that sounds familiar. Some of the books you, you mentioned there do sound familiar. Um, and uh, it, it seems to me that you've had a lot of people in your life who have like come in just, just you, you, want, you talked about some, an Indian fellow or something and just called you out of the blue. Called me on the phone and he, yes, yeah. called you on the phone. And it yeah. turned out he was a dead guy. And it's like, oh, come on. You know, it's like he keeps, he keeps talking, but he doesn't listen. He keeps talking and telling me what I need to do with my life, and he doesn't right. listen. And then right. finally, he says, "Okay, I will teach you how to meditate in the light, and the light will teach you." And it's like, right. "What?" And then I go to the bookstore, and I said, "I want to see a book by uh, a man who led lightning, lightning tours of India or leads lightning tours." In, okay. in, in the book, and, and I walk into a corner, and face out is this book, and I turn it over and I read his biography, and this is what he taught: meditating in the light. He died two years before he started calling me, and it's like, this, <laughs> wow. this can't be happening. So, I mean, for a long time, I wouldn't tell the story because people would think, oh, that Vaughn is really crazy. But I really got these calls, mm -hmm. and um, I've had people like that. You know, I had a, a yoga teacher that met me on a plane and said, when you moved, when you moved to my city, no, no, she said, call me uh, in, in Minneapolis. And I said, I don't live in Minneapolis. She said, no, call me and, I, and I'll start your yoga instruction. Mm -hmm. She said, and, and I said, no, no, you don't understand. I don't live in Minneapolis. I'm just on a plane. And she said, it doesn't matter. Just call me when you're there. And so six months later, they moved the company to Minneapolis. Not, yeah. not, 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 not even the owner who was going to do that knew that at the time she told me that. Mm -hmm. So I pick up the phone and I call her. And she says, oh, good. You're here now. <laughs> and it's like incredible i mean yeah. i've been lucky with people like that yeah even with your your spirit your spirit guide um you, you mentioned and uh even the tree in the forest that called out to you i mean you so you you, you definitely you're you're in the zone i want to get there you know <laughs> yeah so just uh, talking about um the uh the indian fellow fellow who had called you after he was oh. dead that reminds me of your upcoming book, Your Mysterious Messages from Beyond. Uh, yes, yes. That, uh -huh, that's coming out in the uh, fall, winter here this year. Thank so, you, yes. Uh, for that. Yep, that'll be exciting. So that goes into thought, thought forms as well um, and the messages then, uh, too. So Chris, when I wrote, when I finished the book and I sent it to you <laughs> and you sent me a contract and I was like, huh. And it's like, uh, one of my friends always says, did you, did you, were you clear in what you wrote? And did you tell everything you, you needed to say? Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, <laughs> you know, after the book is, is turned in, you think, oh, I didn't say something. So mm -hmm. what I didn't say was actually in this book. It's like, it's one thing to project thought forms. It's another thing to hear thought forms. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many thought forms that are coming to us. I mean, if we, if we think of universal... Um, energy uh universal consciousness everywhere pervasive in the universe mm -hmm. and and we think that there are, are many many things out there as mm -hmm. my teacher lewis often said they're out there if you can listen so mm -hmm. and so i said there's three things i want you to know and he later wrote this book listing the three things he said listen 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 and it's <laughs> like if you just simply listen uh -huh. but it, listening is hard and you have to train yourself to yeah. be a better listener and you have to hear with new ears and 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 the the these are our silent messengers. These are our unseen messengers. Mm -hmm. They could be angels. It could be the voice of God Himself or herself. It could be spirit guides. It could be people from beyond the veil. It could be it could be uh, elemental spirits. It could be trees. There are many voices 
that are not auditory. Mm-hmm. So if we if we look at our reality as shaped by our three dimensional orientation, dependent on our f- five physical senses, we're going to miss a whole lot. So we have to learn to hear with new ears. We mm-hmm. have to hear the message inside our head. Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. people can do that. We call them telepathic. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It remind me of a passage or well. Um, something that was said a lot in the Gospel of Thomas, you know, uh, yep. this was those who have ears will hear. Um, so it's a matter of having being trained, um, train yourself to be able to hear or being ready, perhaps even to hear uh, the messages. But that's a yes. whole other book coming out. Everybody that, should read the Gospel of Thomas. What's that? Everybody should read the Gospel of Thomas. Everyone should read the Gospel of Thomas, exactly. Yep. Maybe, maybe you could do a commentary on that. That would be, <laughs> that'd be no, something. No, no. It stands yeah. by itself. Yeah. Okay. It Great. says everything. It does. You're right. You're correct. Um, so, uh, so, so for you, you know, I, I read a lot with public, you know, publishing company. What, what do you read? What do you, you have a whole? Are they all yours in the background? Yeah, I well, I do read the the Gnostic Gospels, yep. and um, I, I I think that they're very mystical. Yep. Um, uh, Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Phys- uh, Philip, um, Gospel of Mary Magdalene, mm-hmm. um, the uh, Sophia. Uh, the Gospel of Sophia, uh, the Sophia of Jesus Christ, I think it's called. Mm-hmm. Very impact where he says, uh, um, I am light, you are light. We are daughters and sons and daughters of light. Mm-hmm. And, and, and my father above is the ultimate source of light. It's like, mm-hmm. wow, it's like powerful stuff. Mm-hmm. And it will change your life if you just like stop trying to think about it and just listen. Just Just listen with when you read. Let the, let the words go inside you and bounce around. And, mm-hmm. and it, it's like, so yeah, I, that, that's been very, very impactful for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and I do read, um, you know, like uh, in yoga and, and, and uh, I reread the yoga sutras mm-hmm. a lot. And I read the Bhagavad Gita yeah. and I read a book called uh, the, uh, the Voice of the Silence a lot which is actually from the same source material as the Bhagavad Gita. So, so I think I'll, the ancient books are very important. I, right. I try to study Pythagoras as best I can, yeah. because I think the ancients knew, and I think we've lost a lot, you know, as, as we've progressed or, or as, as civilization has reinvented itself with every passing age, we've somehow lost our, our connection to mm-hmm. to nature, to spirit, to uh, an ultimate reality. And we're trying to get our way back. We're trying to remember how to get back. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, th- this is kind of what I read. Okay, all right. Yeah, no, all, you know, f- foundational uh, things and important uh, as well, too. So uh, that said, I think, you know, this, this again, uh, manifesting your book, it uh, is uh, a good, place for source material to get people to kind of energize thinking about these things um, and really investigating. So you mentioned the, you mentioned some very classic works and, and thought um, thought leaders uh, there. Um, and, uh, you know, it makes me want to go back as I was mentioning before to, to look, it's not even, even things you didn't reference in here. It's like, Oh yeah, I got to reread that or go, go look here. Cause it all kind of like flows in, you know, kind of together as well. So too. So, um, so what do you feel is the state then of like, say, you know, spirituality in general right now, where, where are people out? How, how does it affect them? Well, I think that if we took it, if we look at spirituality as religion, which is a mistake, we're in a mess because I mean, we, they, we've weaponized religion all around the world. It's just mm-hmm. really become a sad, sad story. Mm-hmm. You know, the Gnostics could tell you about that. <laughs> they, 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 they took the big hit. But, mm-hmm. but I think spirituality is alive and well. I think people are becoming aware of, of, of something more than our physical existence. Mm-hmm. They're realizing the totality, the wholeness of our being, the, the harmony and unity of all of life. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not happening everywhere, but it's mm-hmm. happening a lot. And there is a consciousness shift going on culturally, mm-hmm. and it's happening in a lot of places. And I, I don't know if we're ever going to get back, mm-hmm. <laughs> get back to the old Chaldean age, Chaldean age or the age of Pythagoras and Plato. But, but I, I think that, I think that um, spirituality is going to take us into 
into a, a new era, mm -hmm. a golden era, mm -hmm. and we're on the the cusp of it. And it, it's going to be a, a time of 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 more cooperation and less conflict. And and we we see resistance to that all around us. Mm -hmm. Um, it's challenging time to live in, but it's also a promising time because, you know, in the end, we're going to have a, a great new age in front of us, the golden age. I tend to agree with you. So um, I, I'm glad for to hear you say that. Um, and I think really this is, you know, for, for this, what you've written here is a great, um, you know, a great companion on anyone's journey, really. I, I was, you know, as I was reading this too, I... Hopefully, hopefully, don't, don't talk this, take this wrong way, but I think of you a little bit like a, a modern day, you know, Kerjeef kind of, where you're kind of like G.I. Kerjeef who, uh, like, you know, synthesis, bring it, synthesis together, the simplicity of it, um, but also the powerfulness of it, um, I think is is really uh, fantastic. So I guess really the question is like, what what's next then? How 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 are you continuing to to co-create the world now going forward? What's next for you? Well, I'm writing scrolls, Chris. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm writing scrolls. So yeah. next, in 2022 somewhere, yeah. um, uh, uh, Red Feather is going to be releasing the a totally different kind of book. Mm -hmm. And 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 if I could just say a word about that, because I've gotten so excited to be working with you on this. Mm -hmm. These are introductions to classic ancient wisdom. So I think the series is kind of like ancient wisdom series. Mm -hmm. in their, the ancient wisdom scrolls. So we started with four of them and they'll be like huge, like laminate things that are, that are rolled up and put in a tube, really actually a throwback. So mm -hmm. so, so it, 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 these scrolls, there's gonna be on lucid dreaming, lucid dreams, mm -hmm. um, uh, energy healing, uh, past lives and um, um, uh, magical systems. So I think it was really exciting to do that. You said I, mm -hmm. I like to synthesize. I really, really do, I can because I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a theosophist at heart, and I see it all comes together. It all there is a divine plan, right. and 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 um, we're all part of the plan. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're part of the solution, even if you just sit there and do nothing, mm -hmm. you will become the compost for new creation. So one of my friends, <laughs> one of my friends said, even yeah. nature is so smart, it could take garbage and make compost. And <laughs> and and my friends that are, are oblivious to change, they just sit there, and they too will become dust, and they will too will become compost. We're all part of a great plan, and mm -hmm. and and there's dynamic change afoot, transformation everywhere, if anyone cares to look. Mm -hmm. I completely agree, and I think that uh, you know you were brought to us um, for a purpose, and for us to be able to work together and bring these things into the world. And I'm happy that we're able to work together like this on these these very important um, you know works that I think will make a difference in people's lives, a tremendous difference in people's lives, and that's what it's all about, uh, you know, for us and you clearly. So, um, is there how do people get in touch with you? How do you? Do you oh, you um, well, I don't have a, a website. I'm not very. Uh... Good at this, yes. <laughs> this, this technology. Yes. So, so I, you can find me on my Amazon page. Uh, just look up Von Braschel on Amazon. I have a, I try to update what, what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a Facebook. It's a, a facebook.com slash V uh, I, I post there. I'm Great. going to be on um, Night Dreams talk radio uh july 17 in the evening mm -hmm. i'm going to be on um s typical skeptic typical skeptic the podcast okay. uh this this saturday afternoon mm -hmm. so i mean I, I i try to i try to make myself available so right. if people want to ask a question um they can do so that's great. That's even better than just social media um, and things like that. So it's just you're, you're out there and uh, like this and be able to, to reach uh, people kind of, kind of, you know, virtually in person. Uh, so it's uh, it makes a huge impact, I think, you know, just being able to, to speak the words and to in your own voice, um, you know, tell and 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 uh, you know, <clears throat> transmute this uh, knowledge. So. All right. Well, this has been a fantastic uh, time. I was really anxious to do this. I, I, you know, we've had some good discussions before, and uh, you know, 
coming off reading the book again and be able to talk to you uh, is really uh, perfect for me and hopefully a lot of people you know in the audience um, as well. So big thanks, Vaughn. Thank you. Thank thanks you. To everyone who tuned in to our live event. It was awesome. Uh, so manifesting is available on redfeathermbs.com. Uh, <laughs> What's that? I think I'm sure. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, redfeathermbs.com uh, and wherever trade books and mind by spirit books are sold. So uh, many thanks to everybody, and I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks so much.